My name is Bill Shepard, and I practice law here in Jacksonville, Florida for, I guess it's going on 43 years. And I, for a couple of years, was a bank lawyer, and then I became a, a civil rights lawyer at, initially, and uh, became a partner with a fellow who had been a public defender who taught me to be a criminal defense lawyer, and I hopefully taught him how to be a civil rights lawyer. And so we left here, and we walked by. The first building is a high-rise, and my new client said, what's that? And I said, that's the jail. And we walked another half a block, and it was a nice, modern-looking building. He said, what's that? And I said, that's the police station. And he said, boy, you really picked a good location for your office. And I said, well, to be honest with you, when we moved into this street, it was an absolute ghetto. Next door was a two-story, kind of a shotgun-looking house. And on the second story was a big porch. And the fellow that lived there upstairs was a heroin dealer. Uh, over the years, it's kind of changed, and there are a lot of lawyers on this street now. Our first office was over on Noonan Street, which is three or four blocks from here. <clears throat> and we uh, partnered up with Judge Adams in 71, 72 time period, and we outgrew the space we were in, and we, one Saturday, there were, there were four of us that were together. One Saturday, we uh, just got in the car and drove around, and we found a place, and our only requirement is had to be on the street. We would never be where our clients could walk into our office off the street, and that was a symbolic in our mind. We, I practiced law for a couple of years with a big firm and then opened my own firm with one other lawyer, and then we grew over about a year's time to four of us. And uh, we found this building had been vacant for five years. It was built right after the big fire back in the, you know, 1908 or 9. And so it, uh, it was very exciting to us. And we were engaged in our first big lawsuit I ever filed was to integrate the fire department. And we, we worked on that for the next 20 years and it's still not integrated. And to put up with the criticism and the, the uh, disgust that a lot of the power structure had and what we were doing, they didn't like it. We were a segregated society then. And, and my black partner had never gone to an integrated school all the way through law school. And uh, it was a wonderful experience for me as a white person to be able to become familiar with the black community because I was raised out west. I never saw a black person until I was 16. Why civil rights? Because I wanted my life to have meaning. I didn't want to wake up at my age now, which is almost 70, and say, what did you do for mankind? And frankly, I'd been in the military and I kind of took an assessment of what is life all about, and I decided it's going to be whatever I make it to be. And that's what I've tried to do, to live each day. So that when I put my head on the pillow, I feel like I've done the right thing. Jacksonville was a booming downtown hotels with orchestras playing on Friday and Saturday night, Morrison's Cafeteria with a line halfway around the block, big department stores, people on the street, and, uh, and from the moment I got here, it seems it started going downhill, so now you drive downtown, it looks like a bombed out, impoverished mess with one giant courthouse eating up half the downtown. And, uh, and a big federal building, both of them funnels to the prisons of America. That's about what we got. And maybe a half a dozen restaurants where we can go try and find something to eat at lunch. Uh, black 
kid who was stealing a carton of cigarettes out of a delivery truck in front of a grocery store on Florida Avenue. And a white guy came out and just took a pistol and shot him dead. And the community, which had been victimized forever, rose up against it and set fire to the place. And the fire department was five or six blocks from there, couldn't get to it because the people wouldn't let them. So here comes the police beating the hell out of old people uh, who were peacefully protesting this atrocity that occurred right in their main street of their little community. And uh, that was an eye opener. This is America and this is going on. And it continues. It continues. Which civil rights I uh, cherish the most would be all of them in the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Florida. And I kind of tell people this, this story. When I went in the Army, I had to take an oath to uphold the Constitution. That's the first thing I do. And I was willing to die to do that. That's what I, my deal was. And when I got out of law school, guess what? It's the same oath. We regard ourselves, I practice law here presently with five people. We all have exactly the same fire in our gut. It's a living yes. But I think more importantly to all five of us, we are constitutional warriors. The best fighters have always been lawyers for civil rights and social justice. We're, the, we're soldiers. And uh, that's what we, what we want to stand for. That's what we want to be remembered for. In our practice here, we do civil rights cases. Is any case against the government. We also are criminal defense lawyers. And so we are always defending, and guess who's on the other side? The government. Always. So we are not anti-government at all. We just want the government to do it correctly. And the rules are in this very simple document called the Constitution. Race. Race has everything to do with every room you walk into, where there is anybody in it. In America, and particularly the South, and most people aren't even halfway aware of that fact, unless you're black. struggle. I'm fortunate enough as a white person to understand that. So we encounter that every time we turn around and we represent a lot of black clients. An example of how you would uh, approach a case differently for a white lady from a black lady is I bet you that the white lady would rather have white jewelers and I bet the black lady would rather have black jewelers. Sometimes that's not the case. If you look back historically, blacks were on juries because they couldn't register to vote, and that's where we got jurors from. There were nine black lawyers when I started practicing law in Jacksonville. Nine. And I think like seven of them worked for the government. 